The embattled driverless car company Cruise is being ordered to appear before California regulators tomorrow amid accusations it purposely tried to mislead regulators about safety issues. Senior investigative reporter Bagat Shaban has been digging into complaints against Cruise and has learned about other alarming allegations that haven't been public until now. Seven-year-old Luke loves robots, just not robot cars. He says a driverless robo-taxi operated by GM's Cruise nearly hit him while he crossed this street with his parents last summer in San Francisco. I started to, like, go a little faster. Because it was heading towards you? Yeah, and then it swerved this way. Towards you? Yeah. Did you worry it was going to hit you? Yeah. And how'd that make you feel? Scared. If I didn't run, it would have hit me, probably. So this is where you crossed that day? Exactly. So Sasha Retayo is Luke's dad. You thought it was safe to cross here because you saw the cruise car stop at the stop sign? Fully stopped. Fully stopped. And then it started when we had gotten maybe a third of the way or halfway across the intersection. And it started to accelerate towards us, like we weren't there. Cruise says its records show none of its driverless cars traveled through that specific intersection around the time the family says they were almost hit. But transportation records we obtained show the California DMV is now investigating those allegations. And what appears to be an eerily similar close call caught on camera, where a cruise car drove straight towards a different group trying to cross the street, nearly hitting two children. According to the DMV, it happened right around the same day Luke and his parents say they had their near miss. We were scared at first and then I was just angry, super angry, that my kid could have been hurt or killed by this cruise vehicle. Sasha, a mechanical engineer who has built robots himself, says there's no mistaking what he saw. A cruise driverless car with the company's signature orange stripe. As for the other close call in the crosswalk, Cruz admits that is one of its driverless cars, but wouldn't comment further since federal investigators are still looking into what happened. Cruz says it's now at the center of at least five separate government investigations, probing whether the company purposely misled regulators and the public about safety issues. Accusations Cruz denies. The driverless car company is navigating all of this without its actual driverless cars. Three months ago, Cruise pulled its entire fleet of autonomous vehicles off the road, 400 across four cities, after California regulators determined the company posed an unreasonable risk to public safety. Cruise hasn't said when or where it expects to get back on the road. Mo El Shanawi, Cruise's president and chief technology officer, declined to sit down with us. But in a statement, the company said, we are focused on advancing our technology and earning back public trust. In this case, the technology is running ahead of kind of the common sense and the, the logic and the laws. Late last year, we exposed a loophole that's been allowing driverless cars to steer clear of pricey penalties when they break the rules of the road. Here in California, we discovered traffic tickets have to be issued to an actual person. So driverless cars have pretty much been immune to those fines. It is a loophole in state law, and you rightfully have pointed that out. State Senator Dave Cortese. It's really been a very glaring hole in the law. And Assemblyman Phil Ting took notice and are now taking action, pushing for new laws following our investigation. I think your specific story validates uh, everything I've been hearing in San Francisco. Ting's legislation would add more regulations for driverless car companies, like making them liable when their vehicles violate traffic laws. Cortese's bill gives local communities the power to make their own rules for self-driving cars, rather than relying on the state. The Autonomous Vehicle Industry Association, which represents the largest driverless car companies in America, says while it supports closing the traffic ticket loophole, giving cities the ability to write their own transportation laws could create chaos. We want to make sure that we're not putting up roadblocks for autonomous vehicles to be deployed. Jeff Farah is the group CEO. To try and add an additional layer of complexity will result in a patchwork quilt in places like California. But here in California, it's actually cities that decide how taxi cabs should operate in their neighborhoods. So why should driverless cars be any different? providing additional regulatory capabilities to a lot of city governments, this will lead to disparate rules. What would you say to that? 
Well, tell them we have chaos now. There's no place to go but up. But even if leaders approve the new laws, they likely wouldn't take effect until 2025, giving driverless cars in California another year to break traffic laws without facing the same penalties as human drivers. They shouldn't be allowed to, to have 2,000 pounds of metal rolling through the streets of San Francisco, potentially endangering other people. Sasha Retayo reached out to Cruz to explain how one of its driverless cars nearly hit his son. But after giving the company all the details it asked for, he says he's still waiting to hear back from Cruz more than five months later. What did that leave you feeling? Even more angry. Here was a company that was beta testing on the public. Cruz now tells us it apologizes for not following up with the family and says as part of its commitment to transparency, it's continuing to investigate allegations surrounding that close call. With the investigative unit, I'm Begat Shaban.